Monday morning, everybody. Hope y'all had fabulous weekends. Welcome into Undisputed. I'm Jen Hale. That is Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. No, bang the table. <laughs> bang the table. Yeah. Eric, no. Come right here and bang on the table. No, 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 no. I did not have a fabulous weekend. I did. You shouldn't. <laughs> oh, you got the break beat off there, but you tweet about Vanderbilt. Now all of a sudden you a Vandy fan. Well, you must follow me. You must stop no, 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 me no, on Twitter. Me. Yeah, but I know you were quiet mm. yesterday about the Cowboys. Mm. What happened yesterday? Quiet? Quiet. I spilled my guts no, all over no, Twitter. No, I'm about no, to spill them all over you. No, 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 no. no. You ain't got no guts. Green Bay took them all. Yeah. Well, you you, you picked my team to win. That's Let's all I know. Go, guys. Then I knew I was cursed. <laughs> I like being wrong with yeah. those kind of picks. Yeah. <laughs> Let's jump right into this matchup, however painful, Skip. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers beat your Cowboys 31-28 in OT yesterday as home underdogs. Here's what Mike McCarthy had to say about making the call to go for it on fourth and three from the Green Bay 35-yard line on the first possession of OT. You know, we were right on the right on the line for the field goal. And you know, hey, to be honest with you, I, I felt we needed to go for it. You know, I mean, we I, I called it on second down, especially the way the game was going. I mean, it was you know big play. Uh, Penalty, big play, penalty, big play, penalty. So, um, you know, our thing was just to keep playing. We had good calls, uh, you know. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm fine with the decision. Obviously, I know we didn't convert, but, you know, fourth and three, um, you know, just didn't convert. Little Monday morning quarterbacking uh, for us. Yep. Shannon, should Mike McCarthy have gone for it there? Well, I don't have a problem with it because the analytics, you know, everybody loves the analytics. My partner loves analytics. And when somebody is aggressive, Jerry Jones, his owner, they love going for it on fourth down. He says he likes the aggressiveness of it. I don't think analytics takes into account the tempo of the game at that particular time. Yeah, you can plug it in and say, if you go for it on fourth down in this situation, you have a greater chance to win. But as Mike McCarthy was saying, he said, look, given the, the way the game was flowing, I felt like on second down that we were going to go for it on fourth down because the game had started to kind of slip away from us. The problem is with the Cowboys, and they this is what they need to address. And I tried to explain to you when they got the, the big D lineman from Oakland. I say, Skip, teams at this point in time, they're not giving away their good players. You see, Carolina wouldn't give away any of their defensive players. They're, probably, they're not going to the playoffs, but they say, we got a nucleus. We got something we can build on. For your guy to get – y'all are worse off. 29th in rush defense. Aaron Rodgers, I think, if I'm not mistaken, threw the ball like six or seven times in the first half. Skip, it wasn't that play. Yeah, we can look at it and say, well, they should. They went for it on fourth down in overtime, and that lost them the game. But that didn't lose them the game. You have one of the top defenses in all of football, and you had a 14-point lead. That's got to stand. You got to make that stand. And, and I, I was my only the, the reason why I picked Green, I picked the Cowboys. I was like, there's no way. Green Bay is going to stick with the run because that's the only way because you can't get your quarterback hit if you're running the football. They ran the football. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think they ran, had 19 rush, 18 rushes in the first half and six, six pass attempts or seven pass attempts, and they followed it up again, basically the same formula in the second half. And Aaron Jones and Dylan did a great job of running the football, but scale penalties and rush defense is killing you. Dak is horrible on third downs. He was 4 of 12 yesterday on third down and four, third and fourth downs. Two interceptions. And since 2011, he has the second worst QBR. He's 40 to 43%. Skip, you can't, I mean, you, uh, you can't win like that. Since 2011, he has the second worst QBR. On third and fourth down. Thank you. Now, but guess who's worse? Yeah. Tebow. So that, with that being said, Skip, that, it wasn't that play. I mean, we always go back into a game, and we try to look at one particular play and say that lost us the game. But, Skip, with your defense, you had a 14-point lead. Just last week, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers offense scored nine points. They go get 31 on you guys? You told me y'all were so much better. Micah and the Marauders. We're only going to go as far as Michael and the Marauders carry us. True. Okay. Well, Mike and the Marauders mm. carried you to an L yesterday, but it wasn't that play. I wouldn't have gone for it, Skip. You know, I'm a little bit more judicious. Seemingly, I, I guess I, I lack courage going for it on fourth down, but I'm not a real big in the analytics. I'm looking at the flow and the feel of the game. I'm a human being. I'm standing on the sideline. I see how my offense is playing. I see how my defense is playing. How good is my how good are my special teams? And that's what I'm gonna factor in whether or not I go for them fourth down. Not somebody that's in a, that's never played the game, that's punching in numbers says, well, if you go for them here, you got a 52% chance of winning. And if you don't convert it, you got a 43% chance of I, I I don't believe in all that bull, Jai. But hey, more power to him. But that play wasn't the play that cost him the game.
Hmm. Are you finished? Yep. It is my turn to unleash on what I saw yesterday at Lambeau. I actually, if you remember, first guessed this. I said it was going to be much higher scoring than you thought, and I said it was going to come down to a late field goal and that my guy would make the late field goal, Brett Maher. No more Brett the Fred. He's been very good this year, and he's got a thunder foot on his leg. I said it would come down to 31 to 28 Dallas, and I guess I had dyslexia because (laughs) I don't know what I was thinking because you cannot trust A, my coach, and B, my quarterback with big games on the line. I told you, I ramrodded home this point to you on Friday. This game will be all about, in the end, Dak Prescott. It will be his game to win or lose, and was it? Ever. I told you Aaron Rodgers is not dead yet. He's got way too many weapons left just because he lost Romeo. It does Romeo, Romeo, <laughs> we're for our Arthur Romeo. I don't care. In the end, he still had Lazard and he still had Tunyon, who we actually did a good job on. He only caught one ball for eight yards. Right. And I told you Christian Watson can flat fly. He's six feet, four inches tall. He ran four, three. He just couldn't hang on to the football. Right. And he dropped the very first two throws that Aaron threw him yesterday. But after that, he had a coming out party, much to my chagrin. And in the end, he's actually counting to the crowd. One, two, three. I caught three touchdowns, right? The, the biggest thing Aaron did yesterday, Skip, he didn't jump in. When he dropped those two passes early, and you he, know he smirked at him, he rolled his eyes at him, but, but he, but he couldn't see it. Though, Skip, he okay. couldn't see from way back there. All right, okay, you were right. In the end, I needed my quarterback to come up big, and I'm going to throw you one big picture point about my quarterback. The bar got set much higher for Dak Prescott because of what Cooper Rush did without Dak Prescott in saving the Cowboys' season. Would you saw what Cooper Rush? was able to do late against Cincinnati, what he was able to do at the Giants when they were rolling and they're still rolling and they're about to come rolling into our town on Thanksgiving for a big back-to-backer is we got to go to Minnesota and then Giants on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. If you look at Dak's big picture career, the reason he scares the literal hell out of me is because in these biggest games, He does not come up big very often. If you look hard at what the Cowboys have done over the last three, four years, look back. Show me games, big games, tough games, high degree of difficulty games where Dak came up big and won the game and lived up to his contract when he took Jerry to the cleaners in the bank. Show me. Uh, All I can give you is last year at New England, they walked it off. And he hit CD with a walk-off touchdown pass in overtime and then pulled his calf, of course, and was never quite the same the rest of the way. Other than that, you have to hark all the way back to the one playoff game he's won in his life, in his NFL career, which was way back in 2018 when they traded for Amari. And all of a sudden, Dak took off, and they actually beat Russell Wilson in the Seahawks. Maybe it doesn't look so good now, given what's happened to Russell Wilson (laughs) and the Denver Broncos, but that's those two games. If you want to talk about coming up big, I'll give you at New England and against Russell Wilson in a playoff game. Other than that, I dare you to show me another game where you say, well, that was good, or that was good, or that was good. I can show you a whole lot of that was good with Cooper Rush, which is why yesterday I missed Cooper Rush. Aaron Rodgers was teetering. They had lost five in a row. He had thrown three interceptions, obviously, at Detroit. And yet I told you all week long, he's still Aaron Bleepin Rodgers. He has played better against Dallas than he has against every other team. Every, you Show me one. I'll show you that he's played better against Dallas. He's now 8-2 and two against the Cowboys, including 2-0 and oh in the playoffs. And he hasn't been very good in the playoffs, Aaron Rodgers, because he's 11-10 and 10 and only 7-9 and nine since that long-ago run to the Super Bowl. Although the Bears might disagree with you, but okay. I, see, I get your point. No, but, but he has destroyed Dallas, and he has late-game Dallas, and he has clutched up against Dallas again and again and again. There's something about him. He loves to beat the Dallas Cowboys. He loves to stick it to America's team. And I called him, he he is my Dracula because he just sucks the life out of my team. Every time you think he's dead, every time you have a chance to drive stake through heart, 
You better or he'll come back and get you. And we had a chance. They were teetering in the first yeah. half. And we get the, the turnover early on where he, Aaron he got strip sacked. Strip sacked. Yeah. And then if he we lost. could just, before we get to the, the fateful fourth down call, if, if I could just show you Dak's two interceptions in the first half, this is where you could drive a stake through Dracula's heart, and you don't because Dak threw these two interceptions. Something went wrong because they're talking to Dalton Schultz on the sideline. Yeah. Something happened, Skip. All right. Something happened. Because if you notice, Skip, C.D. Lamb went to Schultz, and Dak was talking to him on the sideline. Somebody ran the wrong route. Okay. It, you, you either have to run it deeper or shallower. You, you can't get in the way. But I, I got to tell you, it's still on the quarterback because he throws it right to some kid who is like the third-string safety named Rudy Ford who's bounced all over this league and yeah. been with four teams. And Rudy Ford did that, and then he did that. Right. If, if, it, okay. He was running like he was driving a Corvette because yeah. he took off on him. Yeah, so two interceptions.